First off, which one do you like better, comics or manga, and why is it comics? Well, um, it's pronounced manga, and <laughs> I like manga better because basically, I, to be honest, I never really liked comics. Like I tried reading them, like as when I was younger, but I never really got into it. But I tried manga, and I liked it way better. I don't know why, really. It's just, I like the characters better. You can do so much more with manga, and the DC or Marvel just, like, follows rules and stuff, but manga, like, can just go anywhere with it, and that's basically it. And the characters are better and all that. Do you like the art style better also, or is it just the fact that it's different type of storytelling? Well... Yeah, I like the art better. The I think I really like it because it's black and white. It's just like simple. I I don't know why I like black and white better, but I like it a lot. The characters look actually like real too, even though it's black and white. I think that's the reason. Last question: What's your favorite? Uh, that's the hardest question. <laughs> well, currently I'm in My Hero Academia manga chapter two sixty, but. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Tokyo Ghoul Volume 1 for Good. my favorite manga. Good choice. Thank you. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I feel like we come back to this subject way too often, but I do want to cover it. There's some controversy around Chuck Dixon and some things that he said. I guess controversy is not the best way to put it, but there is a lot going around about what he said. I love Chuck Dixon. I have massive respect for him. He is one of the most iconic Batman writer. Okay, well, just writers in general for a generation. He wrote stories that I will forever love. And honestly, this time, a lot of what he says, I agree with him on. I want to talk about that. But just to let you guys know, I am going to go back to streaming I will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are not subscribed, make sure you do hit like. Let me know down below what you guys think of Chuck Dixon and his work and what he has, you know, contributed to the comic book industry because he has done so much. Now, I've been subscribed to him for quite some time. He does quite often art tunes and then his Ask Chuck Dixon segment and this man is the epitome of professional. You ask him a question, whether it is on his YouTube channel or you email him and he will take the time and answer you. But he doesn't just answer you in a yes or no or give you a sentence or two. He dives deep into each and every single answer. And I think that's so sweet. I really think he has a good heart behind him. I think everything he does... I. I don't want to like sit here and gush about him because I do have a lot of respect for him, but I want to talk specifically about a couple of things he said. Now, everybody is talking about this one and I've got it kind of written down what he said and we're going to go over that. But he also previously in the video talked about Denny O'Neill. And one thing that I find fascinating that people tend to pick and cherry pick their arguments when it comes to something. So when he's specifically talking about Denny O'Neill, and if you remember, Denny O'Neill is iconic. Denny O'Neill changed Batman. Honestly, Denny O'Neill changed comic books and kind of gave them their like big boy panties, right? They went from whitey tidies to boxer briefs under the guise of Denny O'Neill. He took and he made such huge changes when it came to Batman. When it came to Ra's al Ghul and Talia, he made massive strides forward when it came to Joker not being so campy. But what he's known for is his Green Arrow and his Green Lantern team up. And we talked about it just recently when it came to the 80th anniversary issue of Green Arrow. Him asking you what you did this for the blue skins, you did this for the orange skins, but what have you done for the black skins? And Speedy. 
Those are huge accomplishments you can't take away from Denny O'Neill. And why am I telling you this? Because Chuck Dixon specifically talks in this video about how those issues never sold well, how they weren't big sellers, and they weren't big seller until years later. And that kind of is how comics go. The sales are always lower for the flappies. And then you look at the graphic novels and they usually go up. If you look at some of the hottest selling graphic novels right now on Amazon, you'll see stuff like Three Jokers. You'll see a bunch. You'll still, still, still see Watchmen. You'll still see a bunch of Jeff Johns. You'll see Grant Morrison. You'll see those writers you know and love. But they don't sell during the floppy period. And I think that's really important. And people use those numbers to kind of change the narrative and pick and choose their arguments. Now, I do want to go over what he had to say about manga and why it's wiping the floor with American comics, because I do think he makes some really good points. Right away, he says, and I'm not going to play the whole thing. I will link the video down below so you can go check it out. He says, it's not too hard to figure out, really. There's a lot of dedication, passion, and craft in manga comics. And that's missing almost entirely from the big two. Now, I think a lot of that change has to do with the way people get hired comparatively to 20 years ago, 30 years ago, to when Jim Shooter was trying to get a job, to when Chuck Dixon was trying to get a job. These people were dedicated and passionate. And now you have people hiring because of nepotism or bringing in people because of an identity. And that's a massive disrespect to the craft of comics as a whole. You need to hire those people that have tried and tried and tried. And one specific example that I think absolutely earned his way into comic books is Donny Cates. He tried and tried and tried and tried for years, almost to the point where he, you know, was writing baby teeth and what I think he still is, but wasn't going to make it. And then they realized how great of a writer he was. And now he's a superstar, right? So I think it takes the comic book industry almost reverting back to those hiring practices where it's very selective. It's very hard to get in. And it still is hard to get in. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying people are hired at this point, not always, but for a large part for the wrong reason. So he went on to talk a little bit and he talks about how there's no variety, right? And I understand that. Now, he does talk about the variety that uh, Japanese manga has, like golf and some other stuff. I don't want to read about golf, but I'm not a golfer. Somebody like Chuck Dixon is. Maybe you want to read about that. But there should be some more variety. And I think we're seeing a little push for that in DC. We're seeing more of the horror come out. And we're seeing The Conjuring, which Conjuring 2 was absolutely awful. It was one of those that I am a lesbian and that's why I was killed. It was just, it was bad. But we are seeing good titles. One by the name of The uh, the Nice House on the Lake by James Tinian. Absolutely amazing. A book was just, uh, I forget what it was. Tom King was just announced on another book. We're seeing a little bit of a different take on characters, by the way, a black label, but they really haven't dug into the way that could be a bigger variety. We don't just need superheroes and horror. We need a larger variety. And I'm not talking about golf or fishing. I'm talking about a variety, even some of the slice of life. There's nothing wrong with that if it's done the right way. So he, um, and that's kind of what he's saying here. You know, it's superheroes, superheroes, superheroes. And that's okay. But the variety needs to be there. I think when they were doing stuff like DCs, that does help with, you know, a, a slice of variety. It does. You need to add more titles. Maybe not golf. We're going to stay away from golf in this uh, little area, but... I would say it absolutely does. So he says, and uh, not a whole lot of reasons to like what's out now. Um, because what's out now for the big two, Marvel and DC, is for the most part poorly crafted. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, it's poorly crafted, poorly conceived. It's an obvious political agenda to everything 
and there's no variety. Again, we covered variety. I would say for DC, about 80% of it is good. I think I am going to drop Teen Titans Academy. It hasn't impressed me. I've given it long enough. Same with, and it's unfortunate because I really like the crime syndicate and it hasn't been good, but stuff Main titles like Flash, Batman's fantastic, Superman under uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson has been wonderful. Swamp Thing is amazing, and I'll give it to Bendis, his Justice League isn't bad. But some of those side titles that should be elevated aren't working. They're just not working. Even Lobo and Crush, reading through issue two, it just, obviously it's not made for me. But it should be made for sales, even if it's not now, later on. So, you know, it's just not something I particularly care for. But as long as they're keeping, like, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman never sells. It's really good, but it never sells. It's just how it is. Same with Marvel and Captain America. Sales are generally low for a title like that. So, um, and the last thing I really want to cover is, you know, why why is manga successful? Why? Try to copy it. And the kids that my kids know who read manga are usual comic readers. They're not fans. They're not geeks. They're not going to convention. They just like reading manga. They like reading it on their phones. They like reading it in books. And there you go. I don't see the mainstream or the big two ever catching up. Although there are alternatives. Now, I do think they need a push for digital. And I don't. uh, There's a lot of people that don't like that. Comic collectors. People that go for key comics. Or, you know, the fear of missing out on something great. They need to go more digital. They do need to work on doing that. Um, Comics are changing. And they need to change. In order to keep up with the market. Just like CDs did. When we started being able to download MP3s. They need to change. But the biggest thing that he says here that makes the biggest difference, and I know a lot of people disagree with me on this because, let's be real, social media, YouTube, all of it, it it tends to black pill people. But manga has kids. Let me repeat that. Manga has kids, which has parents who buy kids manga, or watch the anime, or do both, or have subscriptions to Shonen Jump. Kids are a huge market. They need to start, stop doing these weirdo YA novels and actually putting time and effort into them. Even if it's something, you know, they're losing to Dogman. Come on now. That kid market is very, very important. You can keep the older one. You can keep the um, regular titles. For, you know, older collectors like me, but you need to figure out a way to tap into that market that's greatly underexplored at this point. And that would make all the difference in the world. But if they're able to, they should have done it by now or they need to hire somebody that can. And I know they just, you know, um, one of their, mm, I forget what he, he's the vice president of something actually just left DC this weekend to go work for The Rock. <laughs> so I find that pretty funny, but they need to do something. And and I think Chuck's on the right route. I just think that he is a little bit tainted, and I understand that. Um, But there's got to be a way for a market to shift without necessarily disappearing. Because I, you know, I, I don't see it. It's not feasible that comics are actually going to disappear. But they need to actually tap into that child, that child market. It's so big. So anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.